Hey, it's Pretzel Lovers. Mark here from A Whole Latte Love. Today we're going to take a look at clocking in your portafilter. What that means, why it might not be working out quite right, why how to fix that, and maybe why not to even worry about it. Uh, so, I've got a Gaja Classic Evo Pro here. It's going to be similar on any machine. Just using this one to demonstrate what clocking in is. Is That's taking your portafilter. If I can do this kind of blind getting in there. And cranking it in there. And you're hoping, what you're hoping is you're going to end up at 6 o'clock here. Now, sometimes you get a new machine and people are like, hey, I, it's not going to 6 o'clock. It's like only going to 7 o'clock or it's going oh, way over to 5 o'clock. <laughs> What's the problem? What's wrong with my machine? Well, the answer is there's probably nothing wrong with your machine. Perfectly common in a new machine that you're going to underclock maybe a little bit when you first get it. Not always the case, but it happens sometimes. Why does that happen? Well, because what you're clocking in against is a group gasket that looks like this right here. And this is a relatively stiff piece of rubber. And so what you're doing is, you know, you're cranking this portafilter up against that and trying to compress it a little bit. Now, over time, those are going to break in a little bit, right? You're going to get a small channel in here um, when they're cold. So if your machine's very cold, it's going to be harder. You know, rubber, it's hard, harder when it's colder. So you warm it up, it's going to give a little bit more. So if you're not clocking in all the way on your machine initially, you know, you're only getting to 7 o'clock or you're really trying to force it, don't worry about forcing it. Your machine's going to work just fine. Um, so don't worry about it. Let it break in. It's going to be okay. These, uh, what I should say, I've got some pretty colors out here, some replacement gaskets, because gaskets are uh, wear items. If you use your machine enough, at some point you're going to be replacing this on a regular basis. Um, and we'll talk about how you might want to replace it to make your life a little bit easier, maybe correct a problem. So let's talk about other reasons for underclocking. A really big one is, is failure to do that maintenance. So keep things clean, right? So up in here, I've got this uh, Ernex Scoops uh, brush here. This is great for getting up into the group because coffee oils and ground coffee will get stuck up in here. So you want to use this to clean it up. Um, and I'd recommend using something like this stuff right here along with that. That's Ernex Cafiza. Probably want to have that for most machines if you have a three-way solenoid valve to um, do your back flushing with anyways. Um, and I like this Scoops brush because it's got this little little spoon right here so you can measure it out. So what you can do is take a little bit of this, a little bit of water, mix it up, get your brush up in there. And this stuff, the Kefiza is amazing at getting coffee gook out of here. Of course, rinse it well after you do that. So one re that's one reason you might be underclocking is because you got a lot of gook in here and you need to clean things up a bit. Another reason is um, this doesn't happen with a brand new machine in the stock baskets, but let's say maybe, hey, I want to go with a triple shot basket. I want to do those, you know, really cool triple shots or something. So you get a uh, new filter basket, a triple shot basket for your porta filter, and it's too big. Now this one, this one's okay, but if I go to say something like, oh, here's an old Expo Bar kind of rounded bottom one and I've got this triple shot basket here and I put it in there and it's not going, it's not seating fully. So now the space between this lock-in tab and the top of that basket, um, it's too tall so it's not going to be able to lock in. So that's one, another reason why you might not be clocking in. In fact, something like this would probably not even go into the machine. So do be aware of your basket size in relationship to your portafilter. I know I've got a Sylvia uh, portafilter over here and those were always a little bit smaller than other ones um, up until just recently I think they always came with you know filter baskets that really could only take 14 or 16 grams I think that's changed uh, in the last couple of years but older Sylvia's were like that um, so that's some reasons for underclocking some reasons for overclocking well your gasket is just getting worn out there's a there's a big channel in here it might even be ripped it's it's time to replace it. These are wear items. What I'm going to suggest is you replace it with one of these pretty colorful ones. They remind me kind of the Olympic rings. If I do something like this, probably don't have those color rights. I think there's a black one in there somewhere. I don't know. Anyways, um, so I'm going to concentrate on these two because these are the E61 style. I've got some more specialty sort of ones, the uh, red, green, and blues over here. Um, we carry all these. We'll focus on these two. Um, it's also this orange one here is the one that's spec for a machine like the Gaja Classic or Classic Pro or Classic Evo Pro. 
Um, now these are very much the same, and these also work in E61s, and if you go and look on our site for Cafe Works gaskets, you'll be presented with all these, and we'll list the machines that they work with right there on the page for the different colors. Um, the only difference between these two is a little bit of height. Um, this one is eight millimeters tall, this one is 8.5. So if you're overclocking all the time, this especially happens like on older machines, because these metal components over years of use, or if you maybe didn't clean it up so nice and that coffee's acting like sandpaper up against that metal, you're gonna wear down those metal components and you're gonna need something a little taller to keep it from clocking in so far. Um, so you might wanna, if you're going too far with the orange, you might wanna try the yellow. Um, the silicone gaskets, they're much more supple than the rubber. I mean, these things turn right around, so you don't have to crank them in super hard. In fact, you just, you kind of make contact with these and they make a really good seal. So you're gonna save your, your arms and your elbows from uh, some repetitive use injuries maybe. Um, so do take a look at those. Now, what I didn't uh, talk about was uh, how to get a gasket out of there. And what I'm gonna do is point you to a video right over here. It's gonna show you how to do it on this machine and you can apply that to pretty much any machine. We got some tips and tricks over there on how to do that. You know, you might do this thing where you turn a screw into a really difficult to remove gasket to help you get some leverage and pull it out. Anyway, that's clocking in. I'm Mark from Whole Lot Love. Thanks for watching, guys.